Okay, so welcome to the Bright Side Show. Uh, this is being recorded for broadcast. And for those of you who know us on Facebook and Instagram, make sure you like us and write us some comments. And thank you for watching. This is the Black History Broadcast. And if you see around and see fewer and fewer Black History events, it's because there's a lot of people that are feeling very left out when we have a Black History <laughs> Month. But we want to include everybody in this broadcast and we want to empower every business. Yes, sure. And we hope that all these Black stories that you will hear today yes, sure. will encourage you as an individual, whether you're white, you're black, you're Asian or Hispanic, whatever race you are, we hope that these stories will give you the strength and encouragement to get through uh, difficult challenges ahead as business owners. We're also excited to launch the President and CEO series for Brightside Broadcast. Each month we broadcast a theme and this month is Black History and we have some fabulous business owners that you will meet all through this broadcast that we'll be recording from now until 3 p.m. So stay tuned. And if you need to take a break, switch your camera off, take a break and come back. And if you have to go back to your respective jobs, we understand. So stay as long as you can and welcome, welcome, welcome. Our first speaker is Lisa L. Uh, Baker. And many of you have seen her on our broadcast, but we're doing something very different this year. Um, she is the founder and speaker, and she is an ICF certified coach. Uh, Lisa is known for showing high performing professionals how to level up and live the life of their dreams. Uh, Lisa has three decades of ex extraordinary success in the series of leadership roles of Fortune 500, companies like Synchrony Bank, Microsoft, Citibank, Bank One. And she is the bright side trailblazer. And she has trained Elton and me. We are in her grow program. And uh, we have got very organized with our finances uh, because of her and the program. And she's gonna tell you a little bit more. We're also promoting this and we're gonna have a special bright side series starting in April and she will let you know a little bit. We highly recommend Ascentin. And she's also the sponsor for today. So welcome, 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 Lisa Vega. Oh, thank you so much, Elizabeth and Elton. I am honored, always honored to be with you guys. Um, this is, as you said, we, we're doing this as part of Black History Month. But one of the things that I've been uh, reminding people of is Black history really is US history. It is about all of us and we can't tell the story of America and the history of this country without including the great contributions of black people. And so while we um, take this month to celebrate, it really is an everyday, all year long endeavor to celebrate the contributions of people of color, um, not just black people, but all people of color um, to this great country. Um, I am again, just so glad to be here today Thank you for sharing my background, Elizabeth. Um, and as she said, I spent 30 years in corporate America um, in executive roles and leading large teams and helping my clients to grow their businesses. And two years ago, right in the middle of the pandemic, I decided to leave, retire early and start my business, Ascentum. And so I did that because what I realized is I could be much more effective at helping people to navigate the various challenges that they have in growing their career, building connections and getting their finances in order. I could do that better outside of a corporate structure than I could being in an organization. And so here I am today. Ascentum is an award-winning coaching practice. We are on Inc. 2022 Best in Business list for career development and coaching. And I'm really proud of that. And one of the extensions of that is the Grow Finances program that Elizabeth mentioned. Let me tell you a little bit about that and why I even started the program. So in my own personal experience, I have had financial struggles, even though I worked in financial services for over 25 years. I found myself at one point in my life having over $1.3 million in debt. Can you imagine what that must have felt like, the weight of that? If you've ever experienced being in debt, worrying about how you're going to pay your bills, make ends meet, 
whether or not you'll be able to provide for your children or live the way you want to live. That is no fun. And even knowing what to do, I still found myself having those difficulties. And what I realized is that it's not so much about how much money you make really, but it's more about what we believe about money. It's about how we are able to educate ourselves and then apply the knowledge that we have to make better choices for ourselves. And so I determined for myself to break free of that financial bondage and live a much more meaningful and abundant life. And I was able to do that. I am debt free today with the exception of the mortgage on my home, which will be paid off soon. And now I have the opportunity to help others to do the same, to be free and build the life that they desire. And so I created Grow Finances as a way of doing that. In my coaching practice, I work with people both one-on-one -on -one and in groups. And not everybody can afford to work one-on-one -on -one with a coach, but I believe that everyone deserves a solid financial education. And the Grow Finances course is a very affordable way to give people that information, the insights and the tools that they need to grow their finances. Grow Finances is a four week program and the four weeks correspond to the meaning and the word grow. Week one is all about getting out of debt because so many people are debt burdened. In fact, many people in this country, 48% of them in fact, who earn six figure salaries are still living paycheck to paycheck and that shouldn't be the case. Week two, the R is about retaining more of your income because it's not how much you make, but how much you keep that actually matters. Then we move into week three, where we talk about how you organize and protect the assets that you'll begin to build. So as you're getting out of debt, as you're able to keep more of the money that you make and divert those funds to things that are more important for you, like growing assets and building wealth, you want to have a plan for asset protection so that you don't lose everything that you worked so hard to earn. And finally, the fourth week, the W is all about walking in wealth. And we talk about what that really means because wealth is beyond having just money. Wealth is about living an abundant life now, as well as leaving a legacy for the future. And so the Throughout the four weeks, you'll learn about all of those principles. And I'm excited because in April, we will be doing a Grow Finances course specifically focused for bright side entrepreneurs and those who are watchers and followers of the Bright Side Global Trade programs to help you get your finances in order so that you can grow and walk in wealth too. Woo! Woo! Well, I don't know if you got what Lisa was saying, but she's trying to help you grow your wealth. She's trying to say, I mean, you, no, no wealthy person that I know of can't, doesn't have their, their profile in order. You've got to have your whole your profile, financial profile in order. Bills paid, a process for bills being paid, a credit profile, a profile to get you where you want to get in terms of income profile. So she's helping you set yourself up for this year so that you can be financially free. Financially free, financially free. Just say that real loud, financially free. Yes, financially free, that is, that is the key. So much opens up for us. There are so many possibilities when we are financially free. It's, you know, it allows us, as I said, not only to live how we want to live, but you can be generous and give to and support the causes that matter to you. You know, we want to have financial freedom really translates to economic power. The more wealth you have, the more economic power you can will, the more change you can affect, not just for your life, but in your community, for your family, and really around the world, if that's what you desire. And so that's really, um, you know, my mission. And I, I really want to see us live well. Now, awesome. we've also, with the Bright Side Group, we've selected 100 of our subscribers that we believe will benefit from this program. And so we'll be communicating with these 100 plus everybody who's watching and everyone who's in our network uh, to get into the April program with Lisa, because in order for us to succeed, 
uh, as minorities, our finances must be in order. So 2023, inflation or not, eggs, prices rising, all the confusion that's going on in the world, you must focus on this. And so that's why we would like you to join this program and take the whole year if you have to, to get your finances in order, because you cannot be in business uh, and you cannot grow without having your finances in order. So yeah. this is a perfect segment for the beginning of Black History Month. My next speaker well, Before we get is, to the next segment, if you don't mind, I'd like to take this moment to recognize a, a huge contributor, a huge, huge contributor uh, for our future. And a, a inventor, a great African-American who was astounding. He, he created the African-American, well, he was the first African-American, uh, Dr. Charles Drew. Anybody know Dr. Charles Drew? Yeah, Dr. Charles Drew. The, the American blood bank today exists because of Dr. Charles Drew. Now, Dr. Charles Drew, he, um, he founded the blood bank. He founded the, the process to, to transfuse blood. And, uh, he, and it's amazing that he is so astounding. I know his daughter, who was on the city council for, for Washington, D.C., uh, Charlene Drew Jarvis. And so but amazing. Uh, he contributed. And it's so incredible in that he was in a car accident in, in, in North Carolina in Durham. And that he died because they wouldn't give him a blood transfusion. He died because they wouldn't give him a blood transfusion. And astounding, but he and something he worked so hard. And at this time, they were trying to keep, you know, to segregate blood transfusions. But every, this is this is around the world now. Blood transfusions and the process of transfused blood exist around the world because of this one man, Dr. Charles Drew. Wow! And so uh, amazing. Never knew story. that story. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, thank yeah. you for sharing that. Very good, very good. Uh -huh. So our next speaker is Lady Tiffany Nicole, and she's being awarded, or she has been awarded, the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, she is a media magnet and has helped entrepreneurs to cultivate their gifts, uh, and she actually helps you learn about TV and radio. So Lady Tiffany, I would like to set up a time with you to learn about how we can improve this channel. So we are honored to have a media uh, person like you in our midst. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Bright Side Show. Awesome, um, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Um, thank you guys so much, Bright Side, and um, um, blessings to the others on the panel, I'm honored to be here to speak about being an um, African-American, a black CEO and founder. I'm still amazed um, at how God has um, changed my life, how he has orchestrated my journey to become um, all things that I'm doing in media. I believe um, that media for me is based off the word that um, I glorify my father in heaven. You know, everything that I do, I glorify my father in heaven so that they would know who he is. That I am light in dark places. And everybody know that our radio stations and television and, and all of those things um, are has a lot of darkness there. But God has to have some of his people in places to represent him. And so I, I have the hashtag of kingdom media personality. Whereas I am a media personality, I'm a radio, television, but I'm for the kingdom. So even if I'm on the BET Honors Red Carpet or um, Stella Awards or the BET Awards, MTV, wherever he opens the door for me to go, I'm going to be kingdom. Um, and it allows me to be in places that, uh, that others are not, or they're there, but they're not representing him. And if they if they just crack the door to allow me to share the gospel, I do that. I'm the proud owner of Power Influence Radio, which is using the power of radio to make a kingdom influence around the globe. And um, the music that I play does have some Christian um, music playing, but it also has inspirational music. And the vision of Power Influence Radio is anytime someone listens to the radio station, they receive encouragement. 
their 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 baby, if you will, of destiny and purpose in them will leap and 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 give them strength and encourage to go on. Being an entrepreneur, being a mom, being in this world is not easy. And we need encouragement. And the regular radio stations, you don't always get that. You you don't get what you need. So anytime that you listen to Power Influence Radio, the music that's going to be played, that's heard, um, will um, definitely encourage you and give you that push to get going on your darkest days. We are in the process of adding more um, personalities and some new shows to diversify um, and according to the plan that God has given me. So I'm excited about the new shows that will be launching in mid-March, early April on Power Influence Radio. But not only do I own a radio show platform, I also host the Virtuous Hour with Lady Tiffany Nicole. It's every Saturday morning on Power Influence Radio, um, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time or 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Power Influence Radio, as well as syndicated on Sunday afternoons on Hustle Mama Radio, um, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that is a show that has been running for the past five, going on six years now. We're in our sixth season. It is award-winning. And so many people, um, national recording artists, have graced the platform. And I just thank God for that opportunity. That's really where it got started. I started as a radio show host with this vision of the virtuous hour to do on Saturday mornings. And it came from Saturday mornings. I just remember Saturday mornings, mama getting up, cutting the radio on, and we got to clean up. <laughs> and I was like, well, why not Saturday mornings? I still do that on Saturday mornings. I don't know about any of y'all, but I still get up Saturday mornings and need me some music. It's not Al Green or anything like that anymore. Um, but I put on Power Influence Radio. What I found is people on Saturday mornings, they get up, get their coffee together. They're sitting on their patio. It's Facebook Live on my uh, platform, as well as listen to the radio and they get what they need. They get their encouragement. They get a word. They learn about another author or mover and shaker, kingdom person telling their story and encouraging them. And we got some music going on and we make it through the weekend. Um, last but not least, I've just partnered with New Black Wall Street Market Radio, the new historic New Black Wall Street Market, though I own a radio station. Um, there's no limiting God. Um, that's what I love about media and television and radio and podcasting. There is no limitation. He said that he would take me to the nations. He said I had a voice for the nations. Well, I don't necessarily have, though I have a passport, your voice can go to the nations without leaving your house or your living room or your city. That's what media, that's the power of media, radio, and television. And so I now have a podcast. And again, I'm Kingdom. And so though I'm at New Black Wall Street Market Radio, I have a business podcast. The inspiration of business is Walk by Faith. And that's P-H-A-I-T-H. And it's prayer, hard work, and integrity, tenacity, and hope. And I speak with African-American entrepreneurs about their journey in entrepreneurship, in business, how important is having faith and believing God in your business? How did you get through those valley lows? How did you get to the mountain eyes? Where did the idea come from? And whether you believe in God or not, what I love about the um, New Black Wall Street Market Radio platform is that it has a wide a range of people listening everywhere. There's a million listeners daily, Africa and everything. And they're going to hear about God on my podcast. The podcast will also be released on Spotify, Apple, um, iTunes, and iHeartRadio in the upcoming weeks. We've already started. You can hear that podcast now on New Black Wall Street Market every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm excited if any of the um, entrepreneurs, business people on this platform would like to be a guest or to, um, I could do it virtually, or if you're in the Atlanta area, you're more than welcome to come out to New Black Wall Street Market Radio and tape there. It'll, um, the video footage will also be uploaded to YouTube. But God is, is making himself strong. I don't want to go over my time, but he's making himself strong in my life as I bless others and share the story of others. And that's what the platform is about. And that's what Lady Tim Nicole is about. And I'm just thankful and honored. Never would have imagined 
to be receiving a Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. But his word says, your gift makes room for you and bring you before great men. And the word is being made manifest in my life every day. I'm thankful for this opportunity to be before you great men and women of God as well on this platform. And may God continue to richly bless you and keep you in Jesus name. All right. All right, Lady Tiffany, I see it coming. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Big time, big time on its way. Big time on its way. And I remember, I remember waking up on Saturday morning and my mom had me cleaning the house to Christian music. I don't know. I mean, it was amazing that we had to do that. Yeah. But we did it. We did it. And that was a blessing. That was a blessing. So uh, I, I'm thankful for you and uh, what you've had, to, what you've done, and I, how you've come through a uh, time like that. God be praised. And I, I see even bigger pictures for you. I see even bigger pictures for you, and saying you're gonna knock them down and knock them down and knock them down. And I, you know, and I, you know, and you know, that's a that's a wonderful thing. We think about our obstacles, but see, I don't know. Maybe God has set these obstacles in your way to make them pillars for you to push over. The, the obstacles are not just obstacles. Obstacles are pillars for you to push over, get them out of your way. And so you got to change the way you look at obstacles. And what the way God has set your obstacles up for you is to have you look at them. This is just a wall that you have to go over to conquer the next stage. It's just a wall. <laughs> So don't look at it as something in your way. Look at it as something that you can accomplish and something that can make room for other people. Make room for other people. So, you know what I mean? And if he's trying to help you make room for other people, then he's going to give you an obstacle so you can push down to help other people. Push down and help other people. So, so uh, that we are so honored to be in the presence of these women. Oh my goodness, you have made our day mm -hmm. and inspired us so mm -hmm. much. Uh, mm -hmm. Our next speaker is someone that I am, I, I was reading her bio and I have to share this. I was 15 years old and my brother passed away. It was a hit and run and we were in India mm -hmm. and it was a nightmare to even get his body from the morgue. And as a family, uh, I have never got over it. It's just something that I have lived through my whole life with. And so Cynthia Williams is the founder of Love From Afar. The Chris, um, and she, uh, the Christopher Allen Williams Foundation and PADD, Parents Against Distracted Driving. Um, she has received the President's Lifetime Achievement Award and we are so honored, and I am especially interested in this foundation that you have formed. So welcome, founder, and on this uh, Black Presidents series. Welcome. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to hear some stories. Went behind. I don't know how I can follow behind these two beautiful ladies you had me come behind, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. No, my name is Cynthia Williams. I am the founder of Love From Afar, and it is a grief recovery agency. I actually empower families to face grief directly, head on, don't wait, don't let you follow yourself into a dump of depression. Allow yourself to understand the difference between life and death and know that it is innately going to happen, right? I don't think that we're ever prepared when God comes to take people home that we think we own or we think that belongs to us, but it's a thing and he actually does it. He knows that we're going to suffer through it. And that's why I always tell my clients, you know, the dead is definitely for the living because God wants you to get closer to him. He wants you to understand that before your grandmother had your mother and before your father's grandmother had him. All of these people came before you for the path that you were on to bury the person that took your life to a different type of jump. And if you understand the difference between life and death, you know it's painful. And you know that people are not actually given the proper tools on how to deal with death once someone comes into their life that you can touch and hold and, and laugh with and cry with. And then all of a sudden it's like they're gone. They won't walk through the door anymore. But if you understand that Grieving comes from many different entities and not just death. 
grieving this from the loss of a job that you really loved, the loss of a car that you wasn't ready to give up, but you couldn't afford it, the loss of that relationship with a friend or a girlfriend, homeboy, however it worked, you liked them, but the, it just didn't work. And as the path moves on, you'll notice so many people will fall off of that branch of that tree that you're growing to be the person that God called you to be. And if you don't understand, it's just not that it has to be a bad thing that these things happen. But if you don't go through it, you remain you remain pretty like the person you were years ago instead of growing into the person God wants you to be. And I didn't really understand it at first. I was 17. First time I had sex, I got pregnant. And the same child I buried when he was 17. We were both seniors in high schools. And I really believed like, hey, we, oh, we got to get him to school. So imagine all the hard work of a parent to get my child to graduate and then knowing that he wasn't going to do that. Also then knowing he's never going to come home again. I did get the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award because I am the first African-American mother to fight against distracted driving in the entire world. It was so early. It was in 2006 that my son passed away and I just didn't know what to do. So I started going around the country talking about safety and seat belts and put your phone down while you're driving. And then I started going to therapy for myself, like, okay, God, what, what I'm, this is getting too weird. At first I was in this stage of not understanding. And then I got into this stage of anger. And then I got into this stage of knowing that I think I'm in the stage of shock still. And, that, and then when I learned that there is no stages, that each individual understands grief individually and much different than the other. So when you have this whole conversation at midnight when everybody sleep and you don't have anybody to talk to and you wish that person that you love would come back and you know that they're not now you have to empower yourself through this new normal lifestyle and you have to make sure that you're educated with the proper tools how to get through life because the average person has come from dysfunctional toxicity type of families and they don't really know how to get through stuff so we're not sweeping things under the rug anymore. We're not figuring out how to leave things back where we left them. We're understanding that we got to go through it. And then I realized through COVID, my clients couldn't reach me. So then I began to write a book and I did write a successful book, a memoir of overcoming my grief. So my family members can understand how to overcome theirs. After writing that, I realized I should probably tell about when I was six and I was molested by my own brother. And then I felt so many other people saying, oh my God, I never was able to share until you told your story. And then I said, you know what? We got to start relieving some of this pressure and pain in these women in our world and these men also. And just say, hey, Uncle Bobby can't do that again. He, he, it's over, right? Let's, let's stop holding it. Let's move forward. Let's understand that your life doesn't have to be crumbed up into this whole little girl in the corner method anymore it's not gonna happen again now break the generational curses with your children be bold tell them who you are don't let your children grow up and know that in their 30s and 40s their mother was raped when she was six no start having these conversations at the same age your children are growing up and how important it is to say we're secrets suck we're not having them you're gonna tell it and let people understand that and then I wrote my second book of overcoming childhood traumas because I needed to let people know that they're real and it does not balance on race, age, or gender. Every human has a childhood trauma. Despite what your goal is today, despite what your career is today, despite what your bank account says today, every child and every human has a childhood trauma. It's just up to you to identify what yours is and save the world and tell them what you've overcome knowing what yours is and no longer hide yourself from that pain. You don't deserve it. No one in your family deserves it. And if you deserve to be the best you can be for your future, for the grandkids that's coming, for the kids that's coming if you don't have none yet, for the teenagers that's becoming adults so they can teach their children, it's time out. It's time out. We got to teach our world a little different. And then if you notice that, we'll know that, yeah, teen violence makes sense. Yeah, heterosexual sex and gay sex and all of this stuff makes sense. And it's because teen trauma and childhood trauma never is addressed because it hurts so bad. Let's remove that. Let's artichoke peel that process out, get that pain out our souls and know that I let our generations to come know I made it and you can too. Thank you for having me.
Wow. Very good. Thank that's, you. Powerful that's, that's story. That's really powerful. Powerful. Very mm. powerful. Uh, okay. Uh, I have to take a minute to take that in because uh, it sounds like you had your share of trauma and circumstance. And, and you did you, something you, with you it. you did something with which it. Which is and, amazing. And we yeah. want to make sure that we recognize that. And I'm going to take a, a, a 30 second pause to absorb all of that and absorb the power the power that you were able to uh, overcome and the obstacles that you were over, you were able to overcome uh, and how it, it encouraged you. And every obstacle is not, you know, uh, something that will beat us down. Some obstacles are meant to push us forward and, and bring us to a powerful place of achievement because other people are going through similar circumstances. And so let's take a minute and just, you know, absorb, absorb that and, and, you know, and understand it too and come to a place that we have to find solutions to help our sister and other people who are going through these kind of things uh, defeat. Mm -hmm. And how, as a community of people, how that makes a difference with tomorrow, how that makes a difference for our tomorrow. And all of our tomorrows count. If you add everybody in this room's tomorrow up, man, that's a legacy of time. That's, that's a legacy of time that's incredibly powerful. All our tomorrows and the tomorrows of people who we don't see, if we can help them reach their achievements, you know, and, you know, and sometimes I don't think we understand, you know, how important our tomorrows, your tomorrows, my tomorrows, his tomorrows, her tomorrows, and those tomorrows add up. And so how can we help you understand your tomorrow and reach the achievement for your tomorrow and get the obstacles for your tomorrows out of the way so that you can achieve your tomorrows? You can achieve your tomorrow. So I'm going to take a 30 minute pause and I'm going to recognize the Black issue month, uh, the great uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., how he sacrificed it all, how he was able to help us and his own obstacles. He said that, you know, listen, I know that my time is limited, but if I can help you reach your tomorrow, if I can help you not be, and I, I excuse me for the candid view, but you know, he, he, he said, I've got to do whatever I can so that other people get what they're able to get. And I got to, you know, I'll give it all up so that the, the, the stuff that we've had to go through, we don't have to go through anymore. And so, so how can we help you? How can we help you achieve? How can we help you reach the the magnum the, the 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 magnificence of your achievement? How can we help you understand that you know some of us will give up something so that you can reach something else? So so I I just want to recognize him and his magnificent uh, work and how he was able to understand we were going through a whole lot of nonsense during his era and still do. You know, but now, you know, the, that nonsense now can reach another level of achievement, you know, because if we don't have to deal with that anymore. Now, if we can eliminate the personal stuff and we can start working on things so that our children, our cousins, our, our, our next generations can really step forward, can really step forward into great achievement. And, and to put this other stuff behind us. So I have to recognize you, sister, that amazing work. God that praise is. you for your yeah. work. God praise you for your understanding and God praise you for your magnificence and power. Yep. And, you know, and if you can enable other generations to step into their power, that's what you're doing. Continue to do that. That's what you're doing. You know, that, I said this wasn't going to be a powerful day. It's going to be a powerful day, yes. and it's going to be a powerful day. You getting it? You got it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get on board. Yes. Get on board. We're going to be rich, and then we're going to get rid of some of these social issues. We're going to be rich, and we're going to get rid of some of these social issues. Power, power, powerful. 
All right, all right, all right. All right, come on, come on, come all on. All right, on. so okay. let's uh, just take a, just a minute of silence uh, just to reflect on people that just were, who, who just died because of reckless driving. Uh, they were good people, they were family people, whether they were young, old, children. We've got thousands of millions of these stories. Uh, so uh, let's just take a few minutes, just take a minute of silence and just pray for these families and these victims and also to our uh, leadership, our president, the Congress, uh, Senate, so that they may make more laws to protect this, this horrendous act uh, of, of reckless driving. Uh, that so we can see a future where we have less and less of these uh, deaths. So let's take a minute of silence. Oh, uh, yeah. Ma, 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 ma. I mean. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That was just wonderful. Uh, my next speaker is one of my prize sponsors. And you, who doesn't like to get a prize? So one of the things we do at Brightside is that every broadcast, whoever attends, goes into a drawing. Uh, next month, we have a Women's History Month, and I hope you all will come back on the show, uh, and we will be doing uh, stories about women. Uh, and we always give prizes. So the raffle drawing will be at the, at the Women's uh, History Month. And uh, we will also be promoting Grow all through April. We'll be hand selecting people. So please um, talk to me, talk to Lisa. If you want to enroll in this um, Ascentum uh, Grow four week program, uh, please let us know. Uh, we're putting the list together and we want this to be as empowerful as it possibly can. Now we've wanted to do a vision board for a very long time. So this, this Grow is going to be that, that financial manifestation, changing your mindset. And so we're gonna encourage everyone in our network to sign up for the April GROW program. Uh, so Brenda is a Tupperware. And as you know, historically, many black businesses have grown from the multi-level uh, marketing. And I have much respect for these empowering women that have stayed with old brands. Now we've got people selling Bitcoin and gold and all kinds of new things. But I think the ones that have pioneered the very old brands that have made a lot of black millionaires uh, and one of them is Tupperware. And so we have Brenda and she actually has several businesses. She has a full-time job. I don't know how she does all these wonderful things. And Brenda, we want you to be in the GROW program. So I'm glad that Lisa's still on and, and can meet you. And so Brenda is sponsoring prizes, uh, which we will be raffling. So all of you will be entered to win as well as everyone on Facebook, Instagram, anyone that writes us a comment will be in the drawing. So Brenda, tell us about these wonderful prizes that you'll be giving away within the next two months. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brenda Rockingham, and I can be your neighborhood Tupperware lady no matter where you are in the world. <laughs> I've been selling this wonderful product for about, I think this year makes seven years, August. August 5th will make seven years. Uh, Tupperware has been around before I came into this world, and the product lasts forever. I've run into a couple of quite a few, I wouldn't say a couple, quite a few people that still have Tupperware probably from when they, um, probably, I want to say probably from the seventies. I was just a little girl then, but the Tupperware is still working, still doing what it's supposed to do. And that's what we want. We want to save money and Tupperware will help you save money on the best plastic in the world. So I'll be, I'll show it, I'll show, take it out of the box. I'll be raffling off this wonderful chopper. It will chop up whatever you need to be chopped up during the holidays or everyday usage. Um, I've used it for peanuts. My uh, husband <laughs> wanted some uh, peanut butter cookies and we had run out of peanut butter. I put those <laughs> peanuts in here and chopped them up and it made peanut butter. I've also used it for ground uh, coffee, to grind coffee, so it can do everything you want it to do and more. Um, so whoever gets it will be happy. 
can win that as a prize. <laughs> it's a wonderful prize. It's a wonderful prize to own. It's a wonderful uh, prize. I, Go ahead. I also uh, started my own business uh, during the pandemic, June of 2020. Uh, my wonderful mom was a hairdresser. And we were on the phone talking. This was probably about 2017 and she had dementia in her last stages of her life. She passed in 2018. So she never did get a chance to see this product, at least not here on earth, but I'm sure she's up there looking down on me and, oh, she finally listened to me. But anywho, let me carry on. Uh, we were on the phone talking one day. I'm like, mama, what can I get for my hair? It was like, my hair has stopped growing. And I'm thinking she's going to tell me to go to Sally's because Sally's was her favorite beauty supply. She didn't tell me that. She told me to pray about it. And like I tell everybody, I prayed about it once or twice. I had God, <laughs> I needed God to fix some stuff that was more important than my hair at that time. And during the pandemic, June, uh, that was the month she was born. So I'm thinking that had a lot to do with it. She was born June 21st. Uh, the spirit spoke to me and told me to make my own hair grow oil. And I did. And she would always say, you don't never listen to me. <laughs> I can hear or not. So anyhow, that's how this came about. And this will be my three-year uh, mark with my own hair grow oil and shampoo and conditioner. And I'm adding some new products to my line this year. <laughs> I share with you the video from Madam CJ Walker's uh, granddaughter. And it is such a video I'll share it with all of you. you. You'll never believe what an empire the woman built unless you see the photos. I'll try to yes. play that during Women History Month. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great story. So, it you is. know, definitely should try <laughs> and get your product patented, patented and then get it into stores. So I can help open some doors for you. So let's look at a bigger vision for the hair oil and definitely sign up for Lisa's program so you can grow that wealth. So um, uh, the next person is Shikwana Chambers. Uh, Shikwana was one of our sponsors for our food show. And she and her brother came and did a culinary demonstration. They were marketing a set of knives. Shikwana now is a become a, uh, she's empowering people in a rural area in North Carolina called Pitt County which is also going to be a big area because Toyota is going to be manufacturing cars in that area, giving, I don't know, five or 6,000 jobs. So Shikwana, can we see you? Can you present what she's doing some amazing work? Shikwana? There she is. Hi, my beauty. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Good morning, good morning. I am trying to get myself sat down. I am always on the move. Um, um, good morning. Um, my name is Shaquana Chambers. Um, as she mentioned, I am here in Pitt County. Um, Bethel is where I reside. Is where my office is. Um, what you see behind me is actually a a store that I'm opening right here on Highway 11, uh, which has access to pretty much um. Highway 64 and 264, it's, it's going to be a, a, a area, as you mentioned, that is going to have a lot of traffic. Um, I have been doing the knives for about six years. Um, it's called Rada Cutlery. Um, it's a well, well-known brand. Um, if you like to cook, I had never heard of it until I started cooking um, the way that I do. But um it's, my whole company is about enhancing the quality of life, not just cooking, not just I become a life insurance agent. I become about credit, financial literacy. Um, I'm also in the community with the children, teaching them how to prepare meals so maybe they can have something put together when their parents come home. You know, just being, you know, a team player all the way around. And I am trying to show people how to do that. Um, in 2014, I had the gastric sleeve and it changed my life dramatically. 
I was over 300 pounds and we'll get into that story at another time. But um, I had no sense of direction of how to even enhance my life. So I started on a mission of going to different types of therapy, not just mental therapy, because eating is mostly mindset. I, I never knew that. Nobody ever taught me that. I thought it was when, when your stomach growls, time to eat. So <laughs> I began to learn more about the, the issues in our community, um, how health really can deteriorate your body in more ways than one. Um, I, I, I just was very unhealthy. And I'm on a mission just to, to not wait until we're an adult to try to, to enhance your life. It starts in the schools. It starts at home. And I just want to do my part. Um, I've become an, a, a consultant. I've become an incubator of businesses. Um, just wherever I'm needed at in the community, I try to give it 100%. And this is more than... I could ever ask of you, Miss Elizabeth, like um, just being able to spread the awareness before something happens is key. I, I never knew. Nutrition has become a part of everyone's life. Public health is not just the pandemic that we're going through. It's become an epidemic. Um, we're starting to see the effects of fast food in, in children. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say, but it's just, it's a learning experience for me and I'm enjoying the session that we're having today. I've picked up so many things that just got my, my mind just tinkering on something else that I can put into our community. We can't hear you, your microphone. It's a small community, but we're about to grow. And um, I, I also recently found out Pitt County is, is very bad on car cardiovascular health. Like, it's, it's, it's really an epidemic here. And I just want to do my part. I'm getting in with the right people so I can spread awareness about just enhancing your life before it's too late. It's too late when you need a policy. Let's start enhancing those areas where we can now. And, and I appreciate the opportunity just to be a part of anything and just try to be on site and if I could do anything for any of anyone or show up just to spread awareness about how I can enhance your enhance life, how you can take matters into your own hands is what I'm trying to to employ with people. You know, our life is in our own hands. We can't expect someone else to do it for us. Well, yeah, Shikwana, thank you so much. Every time you come on our show and in our events, you've always inspired us. She's also a, a survivor, and if you hear her story, uh, and you look so fabulous. So thank you for being one, the testimony that you can survive, but then taking what, what could have been a tragedy and building uh, awareness, which is, which is just fabulous. Uh, yes, I will get back with you, and I want you to enroll and grow so that you grow financially as well as this great retail store that you're opening so yes. congratulations we love retailers and uh, we can definitely help you uh, with that retail business so we want you to grow so yeah so this is this is a perfect i'm glad lisa's still on mm -hmm. uh, so okay so i now would like to um have maybe uh, migdalia regida uh, do a quick presentation and then we'll bring um uh so talk about Black history. Talk about 96 years of bringing encouragement to the community, spending every day, every hour, every second for, your, for the love of your church and the love of the community. A woman of wit, grit, and spirit. And she is what we call the queen, Queen Ernestine Wooten. So uh, I'm wondering whether we bring her now on or uh, shall we do a quick introduction with Reginald and Migdalia? And I see Kia's on as well. And I think I gave everyone a chance to speak. So um, last night, talk about team. Last night at, at about eight o'clock, Nancy called me to say that she had slides and that, that our queen wanted to make a presentation. And I was very impressed. I called uh, Reginald and Migdali because I didn't know who would pick it up in the middle of the night. As they say, if you were to call someone in the middle of the night and ask for help, 
who would you call? And both of them answered the call. So we're gonna see two sets of slides. Uh, so let me let me do this quick. So Reginald uh, Lavely is uh, the winner of Brightside's Trailblazer Award. He is also the winner of the 30 day challenge that we did uh, in 2022. He has steered with us completely. And now he's going to be an independent contractor for Brightside, uh, as well as many, many businesses that he runs. So Reginald, give us a quick intro. I'll bring Megdalia and then we'll bring uh, our queen to present. Go ahead. All right. Good day, everyone. Uh, thank you, Elton and Elizabeth, for the opportunity to address uh, everyone. It's just fair to say that, hey, Black history is American history. And when I look at this room right now, I see beauty. I see intelligence, I see resilience, and I see innovation. That goes without question. I'm Reginald Lyerly, and I'm coming to you from Durham, North Carolina. I'm involved in many things, and before I got involved in many things, I was in the U.S. Army for 23 years. I've been retired about three years now, and I've been involved with different things. As it pertains to Black History Month, I think the role that I'm proud of all the roles that I get the chance to, uh, to serve in, but I am most proud of this one. I serve as a diversity, equality, and inclusion executive recruiter for DNA executive search under DNA Legacy Group out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I assist veterans and cybersecurity professionals throughout the US and Canada. And um, everything for me is about service, you know, what can I do uh, to serve? What can I do to um, to help someone? I don't wear that uniform anymore, and that's fine. But the service element and making this world a better place is something that is always honorable and a great thing to do. And I think about with this month, my, one of my role models is Reginald F. Lewis, and he was the first African-American male to build a billion-dollar uh, company. So that's all I wanted to share on that. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. So why, thank you so much for your service. And thanks so much for what you continue to do with us. And he's also going to be the chairman for the 30 day challenge that we will be announcing in the month of May, I think, uh, because we've got so many things going on, we can't do everything. So we decided to move that to May. Um, so we have, we've been overjoyed with Migdalia. So we've, we've been black, we've been uh, uh, Chinese, we've been Asian uh, mm -hmm. and Migdalia came in and she brings to us the Latino market as well. Uh, she's bilingual and she's a healer. She has a coaching business and she's completely, she's fabulous. She's, uh, she's uh, got just ter terrific credentials. So I'm going to let her introduce you to Infinite Whole uh, Healing, and uh, she's now uh, in Texas. And so, ooh, we actually have Dr. Dietrich. Very good. Um, so Lisa Baker, these are all on your list. So I hope you're paying attention. So over to you, Migdalia, and Dr. Dietrich will uh, present. Oh, Dr. Dietrich, welcome. Hello. Hi. I'm so excited to see you. Nice to see you. Yes, I'm going to have Migdalia present. And how long do we have of your time? Because she's a working physician. We can't hear you. Oh, the whole time. Oh, wow. Okay, so we've got uh, our queen presenting and then we'll bring you on. So oh, over to you, Migdalia. Oh, okay. Okay, hello, beautiful people. I feel so grateful and honored to be here and a part of this bright side community. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the warm welcome and for everybody's attention and just, you know, the joy and, and energy that you bring to this place. I just want to say that I'm always in awe of the history and current contributions of Black Americans to this beautiful country. Um, I'm always you know, inspired by the determination and the dedication, you know, to really bring, you know, advancement, greatness, purpose, well-being, and prosperity to this country, right? And to bring that into fruition and to share that with others and inspires others because 
these are all stories in the end about what it means to love, what, to, what it means to be in unity, and what it means to honor the sacredness of life. And so I just want to say thank you, thank you all for sharing history and also for sharing your stories, your current contributions to, you know, our beautiful world. Um, I'm Miggy Rodriguez or Migdalia Rodriguez. I'm a healing transformation guide and owner of Infinite Flow Healing. I'm dedicated to the wellness and personal power of women. I love supporting women to heal from the wounds of the past and transform their life challenges into opportunities for inner growth and victory. What I desire the most is to just to hold space and inspire women to really decondition and build capacity and strength, especially when it comes to navigating emotional energy, because our emotional energy has a way of tripping us up and, you know, getting us stuck in all these little patterns of spinning our wheels, playing small and, and, you know, behaviors that just don't serve us. And so I bring kind of like a very unique perspective. I help people to really look at their circumstances more from an energetic lens, just because it helps them kind of like remove or release the emotional charge that comes, that kind of restricts them. And it also helps them to see it more from the perspective of what is this trying to teach me? How is this trying to move me in a different direction? How is this trying to, you know, help me to really step into who I am and to get aligned to the essence of my being? Okay. And so that's what I do. And again, I'm so honored to be here. If I can be um, of service to anybody, just reach out. I'll put out, I'll put my little link in the, in the chat. And I'm just so grateful to be here with you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Victoria. Okay, mm -hmm. so you want to get the slides ready, and uh, we'll bring uh, Queen Ernestine Wooten, uh, Witted Wooten, and she'll tell you the witted part, because I've always wanted to know that story, <laughs> because every time I, I put her on to speak, she reminds me, don't forget now to put that middle name, so uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear that story. So please introduce yourself while we get the slides going, and... Uh, Tell us the whole story. Wow. Introduce myself. <laughs> well, my name is Ernestine Pitted Wooten. And the reason I say that because I had a mom and dad that were one. And they made sure that you followed what they asked you to do. But I thought I was going to bring to you the history of our church. First African Baptist Church, Goldsboro, North Carolina. And the reason I say Goldsboro, North Carolina, because there is a first African Baptist Church in South Carolina. So this is the North Carolina one. I have been a member of that church since I was 11 years old. I had, when the, in growing up, our family and had, had no choice on Sunday morning as, as to where you would be going. And that was going to Sunday school, church, and, and we were in the church. Beg your pardon. Picture of the church. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. This is a, a, a picture of First African Baptist Church now. Now all the pictures, that, the pictures that are up here now, are pictures. Of, First African burned, I would like to have picture number one. We took the pictures from, from Reginald's presentation. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on, hold on. Go, go, did Migdalia, go to the last slide, the last one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a picture of the current church now. 
Okay. This this church, ladies and gentlemen, grew out of the first Baptist church here in Goldsboro. Uh, and, and of course, it was a white church. And the uh, members, I was told, said they got tired of sitting upstairs. So they decided they wanted a church of their own. So we have, we got First African Baptist Church. And at, the, at that time also, the children had Sunday school, but the Sunday school was down in Waynesboro Park. I don't know how many of us from Goldsboro know about Waynesboro Park. It's in Waynesboro Park where uh, the Little River went to the Noose River and goes down to the Atlantic Ocean. But going back to um, First African Baptist Church, if you will, uh, the, the, we had many organizations in that church, we had the trustee board, the deacon board. You stay there. Mm -hmm. That that's it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to talk about that area. Now that the very first church in the sense of top, that was the first church. That church was was a wooden church, and that's where they and they parked their ponies and buggies behind that church. First, at that first African Baptist church also was the first kindergarten in Goldsboro for black children. And the three members from first African Baptist church um, worked for children kindergarten children from First African Baptist Church. The church on my right, when First African was first, the first church on the left, that is, um, well, this is the First Baptist Church. But that's the white church that came to the slides. Uh, it's on his end. Miss Jane. Let's keep it on this one. Yes, you can. The church on the right, that was the first church that was built. And then the oval shape you see down at the bottom, that's the way you went to the Sunday school department. Uh -uh. Go to the top, the top right, right. And you see the circle down at the bottom. Yeah, that, that's no, right. that. I'm trying to tell her which one to go to. Go back to the one you had before. Go up. Yes, that's it. Yes, now come down. Stay in that same picture. Stay in the same picture. Go back up. Yes, come over to your left. I guess it'll be your right. That's you it. see that hole there? All right, that's the way you went yes. into yes. The, the Sunday school department. And we had a very large Sunday school department. And um, I better say this because I don't want to forget. When it, you went to First African Baptist Church, you would go to Sunday school every Sunday. But during the summer, for two weeks, you went to First African Baptist Church for, for a Bible study. About two weeks, you went to Antioch Baptist Church for a Bible study. The Bible school. Then you left Bible school that two weeks. The next two weeks you went to the Presbyterian, the um, the Zion Church for Bible school. 
And the next two weeks, she went to the Presbyterian. So you can see we lived in a community that worked together, not only with you going, you're going to school, but also with your ch church activities. Uh, and coming down to my yeah, the first church there, mm -hmm. yeah, we had it. They had that area rebuilt. Oh, and let me say that also in building First African Baptist Church, they had to help dig out the basement. Mm -hmm. So what happened, you see the fire. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was during the winter. And the janitor made um, a fire in the furnace, and the organ pulpit was down next to it. And for some reason, the fire left out of the um, from the um, fire plate and went over and came up through the organ pipes and burned the church. And that was the reason why we had to get the South African Baptist Church that we're in today. And I let me hasten to say that um, the, the um, people said to us as we were standing there crying and seeing our church burn, he said, we can build a greater First African Baptist Church. We are today, and we have the different many organizations in the church. And this picture here, one with the children, one with the children. Many of the children that were in this picture are now working as adults in First African Baptist Church. Okay. Including Nancy. Nancy, where are you in the picture? I'm um, to the left, the second leg. I'm holding the banner. I see you. Okay. Okay. Wow. You beautiful girl. Yes. Okay. Come over one more. That's, okay. me. That's me right there. Okay. And uh, I can name some of the others that uh, you possibly know would know them. And, and as I said, thank hold that thought, Mrs. Wooden, hold that thought. So let's stop Migdalia's slides. And Reginald, can you pull your slides? Reginald, can we see your slides? Okay. So now we're going to show you the full-blown slides. Go to the next one. Well, one thing I want to Make, make sure I share with you about First African Baptist Church. First African Baptist Church had a home called the Old Post Home. Okay. That home was for homeless people. It took care of homeless people for, for years. In fact, if when I was a small girl, I, that's where I learned to, to knit, crochet, clean rooms for people, and embroider. Because we had to keep their rooms looking as if they were in their home. And, wow, uh, that's amazing. Reginald, show us the next slide. The, miss, the missionary department, uh, was responsible for the old folk home. That there were only two people paid, and that was the people that stayed there day in and day out year round. But a group of missionaries each day went to First Africa to take care of the people. And uh, we have a marker. The, the, the uh, Urban Renewal took that building. And I was so sorry I didn't have a copy of it to share with you. 
And um, also, let me say that the community, uh, the children, bring something food each Thanksgiving. You were asked to bring a can of food, and you went to the old folk home to deliver this food for the people. They, um, and during the summer, they can food, and then I think about how hard it was that uh, but those uh, missionary ladies were there. And we're still giving care, food deliveries to people. Okay, we're going to start. Can we go through all the slides really quick, Reginald, and then I'll stop the slides and bring you back in. Okay, okay so this is what we saw. The next one. Well, the, now that is our march, our march from the church that burned to the church that will, we, we are in now. And I would like to share that, hey, we have a young man now that's on the deacon board whose dad it was, um, had the radio station and he was the one talking. This was the past and his wife were front. They were in the car. They are the ones that were talking to the people, letting them know about the march. And his name is Reginald Swenson. Wow. Wow. And, and so Reg that's amazing. The second generation. Wonderful. And Reg yes. Now yes. is on the deacon board. Okay. That's wonderful. Okay. Next slide. Okay. We saw that. Next okay. one. Okay. Okay. So stop sharing and bring us all back. Okay. Let's, uh, uh, wow, you lived through it all. Any questions? This I is I did not know about this fire and the rebuilding of the church. So let let any questions? Let me say one more thing, please. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. That this church is the home of the North Carolina State Convention. Okay, okay. Yes, and so, it's so, Miss Blue, Miss uh, churches that grew out of I gotta bring Dr. Dietrich. Okay, we have just a few minutes yes, after that. But so Miss Luke is my third grade teacher, <laughs> she's 96 years old. 97. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 97 years old. Yeah. She's 97, and she's still so engaged in work, community, activity. And also, you know, it's, it's civil services. Yes. And we're so grateful for her for what she does and continues to do. And now she just launched a program for youth, feeding our youth program. For the kids. For the kids. And she's still actively involved in community service. Oh, it's amazing. It's and, amazing. And Elton and I, we have a love for churches. So we went, when I first came to Goldsboro, he took me on a date to see First African Baptist Church because it was this pristine church. It was this wonderful church. Uh, and so he wanted me to go on a date and, and we went through the church. And that's actually how we reconnected uh, with Miss Ernestine Wooten. And we had the privilege of attending many of the services and the beautiful choir that Nancy's in. And it is really one of a kind. It's a historic church and it definitely has a lot of history. So any questions, and then I'll, I'll wrap this segment, but I think this was perfect for Black History Month. And I'm sure everyone has a church story to talk about. But one of my favorite memories of First African was the cooks and the bakers, because they every year had Black Heritage Hello? Month and you had to wear uh, African-American clothes Hello? and they had a dessert table. When you think about the Venetian table, with uh, everything from sweet potato pies to coconut pies to lemon cakes to, and not only that, they had they had uh, all kinds of food. And these were home cooked food. People would just bring the, bring a dish to the table, but it was this lengthy table of every possible pig's feet and every tradition, they would have it. They would have it on that table every single 
black tradition, every recipe, and they even had a recipe book. Uh, so this church has great memories and wonderful congregation. And if you are in Goldsboro, please go and visit. Um, okay. So right. any uh, questions? It's a, I, I, well, so this of course is a black, uh, black history airing of uh, people in business, women in business, uh, business opportunities. And uh, what we're doing here is we want to empower you. We want to show you what you have the capacity to do and be. And uh, the obstacles that Mrs. Wooten and many of you have had the privilege to overcome over time and uh, the direction and uh, also your faith. Uh, and uh, Ms. Wooten is a perfect example. She has worked tirelessly, tirelessly through time and circumstance to get where she and we are today as a community. And your work is so important in terms of what you do and how you do it. And so I'm gonna leave Ms. Wooten with this final question. Ms. Wooten, over all this time and the work that you've done and how you've overcome the challenges that you've come. You know, I've told her over, over many a time, she needs to create a memoir, but so, Leave us with this, if you will. You know, uh, you're powerful. Uh, what would you say to people to encourage them to, to, to reach out and to continue to work? And uh, the biggest, uh, the most important aspect of what has kept you going? Well, I would say serve God by serving people. And, my, I'll, and I'll leave you with this. Oh, oh. Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and most important command. And the second command is like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the writing of the prophets depend on these two commands. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Well Thank said. You. Well said. Well said. And, you know, and uh, we would, would thank you for those directions, Ms. Ernestine Wooten, uh, you know, and uh, she has uh, worked hard to get here. She's worked and, hard. And she's worked hard and, and she continues to work. So we thank her for a legacy and a work and we want to encourage you all through your work, through her service. And so, you know, that's why, you know, apologies for the flexibilities on time and programming, but she's got a lot. She's got an incredible history. Yes. Incredible history. Yes. And, and we, so, when you think of how a small group could grow into this fabulous church and, and you go through a fire and then you rebuild it, but you have been faithful. You have been faithful. You have persevered and you have fought the good fight. And today the whole community is benefiting from this. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when we go for voting registration, the church is out there. When there's information to be passed to the community, the church is out there. When someone needs something, the church is out there. So if not for all this work, this historic church, we, we couldn't even celebrate Black History Month. So congratulations. Everybody, please give her a big applause. Everybody, please give her a big applause. Uh, yeah, and uh, 96 years old and yes. still job. making presentations. Good job, Wonderful. good job, good That's job. Awesome. Thank you go. so much, Dr. Ernestine. So, well, I yes. said I, I said, I feel like I should say Dr. Ernest Wooten. Yes, I know. Because <laughs> he has done yes. such great work over so long a time yes. and continues to work and encourage uh, you know, others who, who need to, to see what she's done. Yes. So thank you so, so much. So love your neighbor mm -hmm. and, and, and remember those words. Thank you so much. We will treasure this for a long time. So, so Dr. Dietrich is so, one of my uh, favorite authors. I have to move on. Yeah, yeah, move and uh, Dr. Dietrich is actually a practicing physician. Oh. And you know how busy doctors are and she is extremely busy. But whenever she gets that minute, she just shows up and she just lights up my, my world. She has written five books. And if I had known she was gonna be on the show, I would have brought the books. It's about gratitude. And uh, one of the big things that 
I have learned uh, with her books is the journey. And it's not what you have or what you don't have, but it's about being grateful. And it's a stress reliever and all the things we talked about, cardiovascular and health, and you get so stressed out about everything. But if you just take five minutes to just sit down and just be grateful for what you have, you'll find immense peace that will come to you. So over to you, Dr. Deepsik, and she's in from Texas. So welcome, 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 and please share your story. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Barrington. Yeah, I was just actually coming on. I had some time today, and I'm like, well, I haven't been on for a while. Let me just come here. What everyone has to say, and I'm just so happy to see everybody here. Um, I do have some news for you that I'll get to, but for those of y'all who don't know me, um, I'm not, my name is Dr. Dietrich Gorman. I am a board-certified family medicine physician, speaker, and best-selling author, and I do help those individuals who are stressed learn to incorporate relaxation techniques into their lives in order to be healthier and happier. Currently, I am in West Texas. Pecos is a very small town, and actually, as a surprise to you, I actually stepped away full-time from medicine to to pursue my dreams and my passion. And one of those things is that I've designed a conference for professional women. It's called the Professional Women's Relaxation Conference. And it's going to be this June 16th and 17th in Odessa. So if y'all want to take a vacation to come to West Texas and come check it out, y'all can do that. And here, um, basically, women are going to be learning about stress. Well, let me back up. Men can attend, for sure. I'm even going to have a man speaker, but, you know, it's geared towards professional women. Um, but we're going to learn about what stress actually does to you physically and mentally. We're going to learn um, mindset as well as physical relaxation techniques to get you going and get you better, to de-stress. Um, and this is going to be through lectures as well as workshops. And for those of you all who have like a virtual component to your business, I would love for you to consider, you know, participating in the conference. Because I know y'all are like far away. Y'all like in the Carolinas and stuff. Y'all y'all are like far away, right? But, you know, it might be worth the trip to Texas. Maybe uh -huh. we could make it. We got a lot of people from Texas in our group. So maybe we could make it. Oh, good, good. So yeah, I would love for y'all to look at the website, and um, I I did download a uh, a flyer that I want to try to just visualize, just to see if it would be something that would be interesting to y'all, because you know all of us are out there. We're all living day to day. We all have our stresses. That's just a part of being alive, right? But it's how you handle those stressors that can help dictate how your your health is going to be, right? Chronic unmanaged stress is literally a killer. You know, you wake up, you have chronic headaches. You know, I always have this chest pain. I have these body aches. You know, my bowels are bad. My, my menstrual cycles are off. You know, you know, all of this has an underlying current of unmanaged stress. Yes, there's different causes, but adding stress to it is just like adding fuel to the fire. And so that's what I like to go in there and help mitigate, help you mitigate ways, you know, to uh, better manage your, your stressors. So if I could just share a screen real quick. Hopefully this will um, it'll be just a brief. Okay. Yeah, no. Y'all see that? So this is yeah. just one of the flyers that I have that you all can see um, what's going to be going on. Um, make yourself a priority. Man better manage your stresses at work and home. Meet like one minded women. Bring your your a workplace bestie with you, live talks, breakout sessions. It's going to be fun, uh, swag bag goodies, and of course, relaxation. <laughs> so just consider uh, going. It's going to be a great time, and I hope to really make this conference grow and eventually be a traveling conference because, you know, we're all over the country. We all have our stressors, and we all need help with that. I have a QR code here at the bottom if y'all want to take the time and just scan it or actually go to professionalwomenrelax.com. You can find out all about it, the prices, you know, the speakers that we're going to be having. It's just going to be a great time. And I would love if, to entertain any questions that you all may have. I'm going to stop sharing. And I'll also put the URL in the chat. That Thank you. Wonderful. It's like a great conference. Mm -hmm. I will yes. recommend a few speakers uh, for that because I'm starting a speaker bureau. So I think 
this oh. would be a great conference for us to partner with you on. So thank you for coming on and sharing. That thank you. Yeah, and I'll be here. So yeah. And if you could share something with us that could help the average person with their day-to-day -day stress, what would you say to, to the average person listening today? So Ms. Elizabeth touched on it a lot, and it's often a term that we were using a whole lot, but it's just so crucial um, as far as practicing gratitude and being grateful. Just any little thing, you should be grateful about it because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people that are out there that are a lot worse than you are. And just the fact that you're getting up every day to pursue your goals. Um, I was listening to some motivational videos earlier today, and you know, I really love listening to them because it really helps bring me up. Um, it says that through all of your tragedies, your triumphs, your joys, your upsets, and everything, you've survived the hundred, hundred percent of those those days. And so each day that you're given, it's up to you you to look at it as a day as a gift that's given to you and just to practice gratitude the other thing i just i wanted to impart is that for me the cornerstone of relaxation especially in those very stressful times is to just take some deep breaths you know just to calm it down a little bit, you know, taking deep breaths really act activates a part of your physiology that signifies to your brain and the rest of your phys physiology that things are, are calm, you're going to be okay, you're stressed. And deep breathing activates that. And so I shout that from the rooftops all the time that that's one of the main things that you can do, especially if you're in an acute stressful situation. Because, you know, stress in the short term isn't necessarily bad. It helps you perform. It helps you flee danger. You know, it helps you get your tasks done. But it's that long-term chronic grind, day in, day out, that constant mental anguish and worry. That's what causes the problems. And that's why I want to help people with that. Wow. Very that's good. amazing. Well, Thank we're you. so blessed to have you. And I, you. I'll set up a call and then we can... Uh, work with you on the conference and help you with yes, that. Yes, ma'am. So, Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Dr. Lisa. Appreciate that. So we are fundraising. We are fundraising and we are supporting a very, very important charity. Uh, it's called Out of the Walls uh, International Ministry. We met this amazing evangelist. Uh, we had two evangelists in this group when we started. Uh, one passed away. But we've, Lorena has held, fought, and prayed for us. And we came through the pandemic. Uh, I think we did 300 videos and uh, with equipment that didn't work and microphones that didn't work. But we kept pioneering this, this channel. And uh, I, I was left, the Lord left me with one evangelist. And uh, so we've, we've been on and off in touch with her. This woman is like a woman of God. She is like a powerhouse. During the pandemic, when everyone was afraid to come out of their houses, she crusaded with a cross, walked down the streets of Goldsboro, got COVID from it, but she kept on getting all of us on a prayer path. She organized prayer uh, retreats and revivals. And she, I just, just everything she's done, I have been so impressed. So I am supporting her 100%. She is having a fundraiser on March the 3rd, I believe. And uh, if you cannot come because you're in Texas or Detroit or wherever you are, we will make avail available the link for you to donate. I want Brightside to have a big donation. So we are fundraising and I think uh, we've got a few people that have already committed to donate. So I wanna make sure we have a big number to, to celebrate at this beautiful country club uh, uh, dinner that she's hosting. So uh, Evangelist Lorena, can we see you? Can you talk about it? I don't know if you can share that video. I was trying to play with it last night, but if you can, then please go ahead. If not, I'll make it available to you. So yeah, I don't... Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, well, you can talk. Yes, go ahead. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know how to share it. Um, I have several up. They can actually go to, I have a YouTube uh, channel that I have several videos up on, or they can go to our actual website, which is otwim.net. There is plenty of those videos up there showing them exactly what it is that God is doing and what God is up to. And uh, it just tells, uh, tells you 
exactly what it is that we are doing, what this ministry is about. Uh, it is about soul winning. That is exactly, that's the main thing this uh, ministry is about is soul winning. Well, well, tell us, she goes to Africa, to Tanzania and preaches the gospel. So tell us about these wonderful projects that you're doing in Africa and all the great work that you're doing. Oh, yes. Uh, and well, we've been, long been at it too. <laughs> about what? And how long have you been uh, in this uh, journey? Yes. Yes. Well, we've been going since 2011. Uh, me and my husband stepped out uh, in 2015 with Outside the Walls International Ministries, which God named it. And uh, since then, since 2015, we have seen over 8,000 people dedicate their lives to Jesus. And um, we don't just go into crusades where we have 11 well, 13,000 people that show up, it's not that they just raise their hand and we count. We also uh, give them the opportunity to sign a dedication card. And through that dedication card, uh, they can come to a seminar the next day, which uh, they hand us their card and we give them a Bible in Swahili in their own language. So um, that is one of the main things that we go for is to see souls saved. We uh, give them Bibles. You can't give your life to Jesus and not have the word. So that is another main thing, uh, fundraiser that we do. We have a lot of projects uh, in this ministry. And uh, one of them is the crusade. Uh, everything that we do over there, it takes funds. Everything is funded and hosted by Outside the Walls International Ministries. Um but the Crusades, the Bibles, uh, we have a project that is called Project Education. And we actually live in a village with the Maasai people. And as people say, well, what is the Maasai? It's, I would like to describe them almost like an Indian tribe. And um, so God placed us there. And these children, education is not their main priority. So... We have vowed that these children get an education. And right now, there is 73 children that is in this program called Project Education that has been sponsored for 2023. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just amazing. Um, so we, she's having a fundraiser on March the 3rd. I'll make sure the video is sent to each of you with the link to donate. And, uh, and everybody in our network. Uh, and we will be promoting uh, you all to fundraise because she cannot go to Tanzania and do all this work, cannot print and spend money for Bibles in Swahili, uh, you know, do all the work to build the kingdom of Jesus. So she needs donations. And so we want to encourage everybody to try and donate to her cause. Uh, so thank you on her busy day when she's organizing this big fundraiser for you to give us time to come on our show. <laughs> we are so, so appreciative. And I'm looking forward to coming to the event and I'll make sure we take pictures and so you can be part of it. Um, so Great. Thank you. So and if anyone you... in Goldsboro yeah. and wants to join our table, we are taking two tables for Brightside. Uh, so please let me know. It's at 6 p.m. Oh, so I see Reginald, I, I know Dexter's coming, and Shikwana, you probably could come too, so I'll make sure you, you get invited. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any questions for her? Okay. So once again, you're watching Brightside Global Trade. Uh, we believe in empowering trade, business, and jobs. We do this by bringing people together to share their stories that will inspire, empower you. We offer masterclasses, workshops, and we try to get you encouraged to take your business to the next level. We don't want you to be alone in this fight with COVID. Many of us have lost many, many loved ones. And I myself, because I've lost my whole family prior to COVID, I know that it's important to keep making new friends. It's very, very important to keep making new friends. We can cling our hearts and grieve for the ones that we have lost, but we know the promise of Jesus that we will meet them again. So it is important for you to continue to go out, minister, love, cherish, meet strangers. And as devastating and hard as it is, uh, you will find that God will 
lead you to the right people. So that's what I believe that when we bring people together, we, we, we see magic. So co connecting, uh, influencing, referring business, helping one another, encouraging one another, buying from one another, sharing from one another. Uh, sometimes we can't buy everything, but we know someone who can. So referring people is also a very good oh, thing. So this is our mission and uh, you're watching Bright Side. And if you're watching this on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you see this broadcast, we will always have links available to you for the speakers. Join them, go and uh, like their pages, write a review, write a comment. Uh, if you can do anything, at least share the video. Uh, and that way, the message goes and it, it becomes viral. From, uh, um, uh, with Dr. Bernie, Brenda Boston. Yes, I'm going to bring her on next. Mm -hmm. uh, my next speaker is, we were trying to do the theme of uh, historic Black colleges. What do they mean? And why is it important for our children to go to college? So we have uh, Dr. Brenda uh, Boston, Bonnie Boston, and she has a scholarship fund for kids. And uh, Dr. Brenda, over to you. Uh, tell us a little bit about all the great work you're doing with the kids. And, uh, and, if, and then if everyone, anyone is, has went to a historic black college and wants to share the experience, please do so. So over to you, Dr. Brenda. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Elton and, uh, hey, and Miss Elizabeth you. for How actually inviting me. I enjoyed our conversation on yesterday, and yeah. I'm very pleased and happy to join you today. Yes, mm -hmm. we have right here in Florida four HBCU colleges, one right here in Jacksonville. That is the Edward Waters College University. And then as we go further down south, we have uh, in Tallahassee, Florida a and I know many are, are familiar with FAMU, the Rattlers, as we call them. Uh, here in uh, Miami, we have Florida Memorial University. And in Daytona Beach, Florida, we have Bethune Cookman College. Uh, many of our recipients uh, does attend these HBCUs, so we are very supportive of them. Um, we, the Marie Barney Boston Scholarship Foundation, is located right here in beautiful, sunny Jacksonville, Florida, and we provide financial support to these young people. Not only do we give them checks for support, but we mentor them and expect them to come back to the foundation and give as they have been given. Uh, Mom started this foundation in 2016. We are approximately six years old now and we're growing and expanding and actually bringing new initiatives to the forefront. And I would like to share briefly with you that one of our graduates for 2022 has returned back to the foundation and is being mentored on how to become a board member. So that is a, an initiative that we have started so that we can know and feel secured that our students will live on and be very productive human beings in the communities that they return to. Recently in the uh, January, we had Founders Day celebration, wherein we celebrated Dr. Marie Boston's birthday, January 31st, and my birthday, the co-founder of the foundation on January 29th. It was a fundraiser and we did very well raising funds starting for 2023. Um, there is so much happening here in the foundation. We have connected and partnered with Kip School of Jacksonville, a lot of our recipients are coming out of 
hip school in Jacksonville. We are actually <laughs> planning uh, more grant writing. We hired a grant writer. So, you know, we need re recurring funds coming into the foundation and we want to be sustainable and not really uh, turn any of the applicants away that are striving and pursuing their educational pursuits. So that's just a little bit about us. If you want to know more, you may certainly visit our website at www.mariebbsf.org. That's M A R I E B B S F dot org. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your invite. We love you all. <laughs> we love you too. Thank you so much. And thank um, you for the great work Marie, that you do. We we'll really appreciate you joining us. <laughs> and uh, your, your work goes uncompared to. Yes. Uh, you, you, we, keep, we keep moving. You keep moving. So uh, our next speaker uh, is uh, someone that many of you have met and seen. And I know a lot of us have bought his fantastic book. Uh, if you talk about um, anything that you felt that you were deprived of, uh, he tells it all. The book is called Weak Start, Unapologetic Present. And it is written by a US veteran. As you know, we love all our veterans. And thank you, Lester, for your service. So Lester has spent over 40 years as a federal employee working for three federal agents, agencies as a senior telecommunications specialist, information technology, management specialist, and technical security officer, designing, planning, developing, testing, and implementing national communication systems. His education achievement include an undergraduate degree from the North Carolina ANT State University, Greensboro, North Carolina, and advanced degrees from Golden Gate University and Pepperdine University. He also holds the professional certificate from Cisco Systems at Washington, D.C. So any Aggies in the house? Uh, he has won a lot of Aggies and, Aggies. and, uh, and a lot of relatable stories uh, from his uh, weak start into a very successful and accomplished um, person. So over to you, Lester, and we are so delighted to have you. Good and morning. Good morning, nice everybody. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Um, and uh, thank you for that uh, very nice introduction. And hello to all Aggies on the call. Um, I'm going to start my presentation by uh, showing a book trailer. It's about a minute long, followed up by a, um, I guess, a, a very short introductory uh overview of the book and then I'll come back and I'll talk about um, a specific historical event that I wrote about in the book. Um, not that the book is about uh, historical events, but this is Black history. So I thought that would be appropriate for this particular occasion. So I'm going to now uh, play a quick um, uh, this very quick, uh, um, okay, here we go. And I'm sharing my screen. Can everybody see? It? Yes, we can see it. Okay, everybody can see it except me. <laughs> okay, could you just one second? Okay, I apologize. Give me one second. I got to find my, because um, unfortunately, I'm not seeing my screen. 
Okay. Well, are you seeing are you seeing my website? Uh, no, we just see a blank screen. We see your desktop. Oh, that's the reason. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. And and try this again. Um, okay. Now you should. See, I'm going to share it now. You should see my website. Yes, we okay. see it. Okay, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to start the uh, book trailer now. Can everybody hear? Great. That followed by a introductory um, overview of the book, well, the beginning of the book anyway. This is about four minutes. That's going to be found on Audible. Prologue. Several years ago, when I was at home in Winneville, North Carolina, I was conversing with one of my older cousins. I asked her a question about a distant relative of ours. Her response was, you know, Lester, all of the people who would know the answer to that question have passed away. Wow, I thought. When I was a young boy growing up, I can remember when the older adults would tell stories dating all the way back to my great-great-grandparents being slaves. Or at least the stories that had been passed down from generation to generation. I remember, for example, my aunt telling me the story of her mother's grandparents, who sometimes worked such long hours that many times they left the fields and never got any further than the front porch before it was time for the master to gather them to go back into the fields. They were so tired they fell asleep on the front porch and slept there all night. There were many other similar stories, too. But the point being made here is that when I was younger, several older people in my family had stories like that to tell. Today, they have all passed away. And for the most part, my family didn't take the opportunity to document these rich experiences that we all could benefit from. I wish I had asked my older relatives more questions when I could, and documented what I could. I will not allow that to happen to my offspring. This description of my life is being compiled to help my offsprings know about my life experiences, what kind of childhood I had, and make them aware of both my humorous and serious experiences. That is why I am taking the time to document parts of my life experiences. There is a lesson to be learned. I grew up in the segregated South during Jim Crow. That alone is a story within itself to be told. I believe knowing some of these experiences will help them to become better individuals. Additionally, I believe that the time period in which I grew up, and many of my experiences, are pretty interesting. When you reach my age, you have heard lots of people's stories, and based upon what I generally hear from other people about their lives, I have had a pretty interesting life. For that reason, I am also sharing my story with anybody who wants to know it. Not only did I survive Jim Crow, but like many others, I have overcome its effects. Mm. I will talk about that more later. But that is another reason I'm writing this book. 
I've had a long and enjoyable career in technology. I have been one of a handful of African Americans working with technology wherever I was in all of my career. In this book, I talk about my career and some accomplishments I also had. I hope that my description of the projects I have enjoyed working on might motivate some African American parents to encourage their children to pursue a technology career. I believe very strongly in opposing racial injustice and exposing it when it's necessary. I think that is the only way we will ever meaningfully impact the degree of racial injustice in our society. When we identify or are made aware of negative circumstances, it becomes our responsibility to help in some way to resolve the problem. In this book, I cover some of the racial injustices I have spoken out against and include several of the solutions I have recommended and implemented to resolve the problem. I hope this book will inspire some who observe racial injustice to get involved and do everything possible to assist in resolving it. I believe strongly in volunteering my time to help others. I have done that throughout my adult life. I highlight in this book some of the projects I have worked on to help others. I talk about how God has used me throughout my life to get involved and make a difference in the lives of those who can't help themselves. God was using me to do this, even when I didn't know that it was God who was using me. I hope that part of my life will encourage some to seek God. Okay, so with that, I would like to now give a um, <clears throat> talk briefly about uh, um, a specific event, historical event that um, I wrote about in the book, the Wilmington Insurrection, then versus now. Can it happen again? The answer to that question, in answering that question rather, I'm going to uh, uh, reference a short excerpt from a section of the book living under Jim Crow, its impact. Although slavery ended in the United States in 1863, former slaves were still not truly free. This is true because very soon after the passage of the Emancipation Proclamation, the Southern Confederate states passed laws to institute slavery all over again, but at the individual state level. These laws were called the Black Codes, so not much had changed for the most part, for most slaves during that period. Because of the Black Codes, the states had implemented to take away rights given to free slaves under the Constitution. The United States Congress passed the Civil Rights Bill of 1866. And I do mean that the states had taken away the slave freedom. For example, in the North Carolina Constitution, and not picking on North Carolina, Section 2, of the North Carolina law described the law's purpose as making free slaves subject to the same laws as they were subject to before their emancipation. Those laws, of course, before emancipation was slavery. I will cite an excerpt from one of North Carolina's black codes. Pay attention particularly to section two. Section one reads as follows. Be it enacted by the General Assembly of the State of North Carolina that Negroes in their issue, even where one ancestor in each succeeding generation to the fourth inclusive is white, shall be deemed persons of color. So going back to the fourth generation, any mixed blood person was considered a person of color. Uh, but section two. All persons of color who are now inhabitants of this state shall be entitled to the same privileges and are subject to the same burdens and disabilities as by the laws of the state were conferred on or were attached to free persons of color prior to the ordinance of emancipation, except as the same may be changed by law. So section two, is so important because it applies to all enslaved people who had been emancipated by the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of 1863, 
which freed the slaves. But this new law enacted at the local and state level in North Carolina now took away those rights from all free persons of color and returned them back to the laws that they had been subject to prior to their freedom. So this meant that their rights had been restored legally back to a condition of slavery in North Carolina, even though the 13th Amendment to the Constitution had freed them. During the Reconstruction period, Congress had passed the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. These amendments to the Constitution were called the Reconstruction Amendments because they ended slavery. Guaranteed citizenship for all formerly in, in, uh, enslaved people, including those in North Carolina. And the 15th Amendment gave male slaves the right to vote. This amendment was uh, ratified in 1870 by Congress. Even though slaves got the right to vote in 1870, they still could not exercise the right completely free of intimidation until over 95 years later with the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1965. So instantly after the ratification of the 15th Amendment to the Constitution in North Carolina and in most other Southern states, Three former slaves and white Republicans formed voting coalitions. And overnight, they changed politics and the balance of power at the local, state, and federal level. But this condition was short lived because by 1876, just six years later, Reconstruction ended because of conservative Democrats and ex Confederate attacks. A white supremacy campaign was on its way in North Carolina. And at that particular time, it was growing really fast. So the white supremacy campaign in North Carolina impacted the, the political progress of blacks in the state. But because of some state laws that were passed by white Republicans, they were able to slow down its impact. As a result, in 1895, I'm sorry, 1898, in the state election of 1988, all as many as 80% of the eligible Black voters participated in the state election. This caused the Democratic Party to really beef up its white supremacy campaign of targeting Black voters. This effort was similar to what we see today uh, in the modern day Republican Party doing across the country with voter suppression. Only then it was more intense and extremely violent. This is why it's so important to raise the question, can it happen again? Uh, for example, the News and Observer uh, newspaper sponsored regular addresses and newspaper articles appealing to white voters about Negro domination, black men raping white men, and other white women, I'm sorry, and other fear mongering. It was very much like what is done by some Republicans today when they degrade African-American voters by accusing them of cheating. Like the former president tweeting um, uh, mean, nasty, and demeaning things about uh, some black people in public office. And much like uh, tweeting to praise white supremacy. So the Democrats even devised a plan to attack the city of Wilmington. The blacks were to be successful in keeping control of the local government in Wilmington. Because at, Wilmington then was the most populated city in the state. It had a size of a black population and a black uh, newspaper. <laughs> Consequently, the black newspaper editor responded to the racist newspaper articles by News and Observer calling uh, black men rapists. They responded through news articles accusing white women of initiating oh, respectful okay. contact. Yeah. The anger white conservative Democrats greatly. Meanwhile, uh, the white supremacy campaign of the Democrats was very successful, and it, it resulted in the party winning the overwhelming share of the districts across the state in the 1998 election. But in Wilmington, the 19, in the 1998 election, Blacks and Republicans combined to control all local Wilmington uh, elected offices, all of them. In response to white Republicans' success and recently freed Blacks in Wilmington in the local election, 
the white supremacists on August the 10th, 1898, attacked and burned the office of the black newspaper, Daily Record. The attack resulted in the killing of 36 blacks, all elected officials were forced at gunpoint to resign and were run out of town. Democrats filled all local government positions with handpicked white supremacists. This event placed fear to the hearts of blacks in North Carolina and would prove to impact voter participation for years to come, especially since both federal and state governments stood by and watched this happen with no intervention at all. The, the Wilmington Insurrection was the name that was given to this historical event. They then pursued implementing a white supremacist agenda across the state, which they were successful in doing. This event led to the implementation of white supremacist laws and amendments to the state constitution, which established poll taxes, uh, literacy tests, and a complete disenfranchisement of black voters. This Maybe situation is so tricky because these laws Eight still four. existed when I grew up in North Carolina. When I was a teenager, these laws were still on the book and were enforced. This is the reason that I say that I grew up under the Jim Crow, but you know, legally speaking, segregation ended with the passage of the Brown Board of Education in 1954. But several Jim Crow laws still existed and were enforced, and they remained in place until Congress passed the Civil Rights Bill of 1965. But even with the passage of the Civil Rights Bill of 1965, segregation was still very prevalent. When I graduated, for example, from high school in 1968, Pitt County schools still had not been desegregated. Uh, just think about that. Congress had already passed the Civil Rights Bill in 1866, 100 years earlier to ensure that we had full rights as citizens. And 102 years later, it had not materialized. And shockingly, some of the traces of Jim Crow laws are still present in North Carolina Constitution, even today, and at the time that I wrote the book in 2020. Uh, to be more specific, a literacy requirement for voting was placed in the North Carolina Constitution in the 1900s to deter Black men's voter participation. It was placed there two years after the uh, North Carolina election of 1898, where 80% of eligible Black voters participated in the election. It is still there and has been there for 120 years. Any reader can read the literacy requirement law in Section 4 of Article 6, 6 of the North Carolina Constitution. It states, and I'm going to quickly read it, every person presenting himself for registration shall be able to read and write any section of the Constitution and the English language. The, this literacy requirement is an example of just one of the Jim Crow laws and how it kept Black men from voting during that period. So most Black men could not read and write, neither could uh, most white men. In recent years, there have been multiple efforts to repeal this law and remove it from the state constitution, but voters have rejected all efforts to do so. So that tells us a lot about where we are today as a society. I'm not sure, but I would also be willing to bet that North Carolina is not the only state still has some remnant of Jim Crow in its constitution. Let's hope I'm wrong, but I happen to know I'm not wrong. The important part to be made here is that today we see the same toxic atmosphere across the country that existed in 1900 when the state legislature passed that law. Many states as you know, have passed anti-voting laws and the process is still on the rise. And another important point, and the last point to be made here, is that unlike many elected officials who support these efforts, most citizens of today do not support this attitude. And this is evident by the outcome of the last election. But in order to maintain a democracy in this country, all citizens have a responsibility to speak out against political activities such as anti-voting laws that we see being passed across the country. So the question remains today in 2023, 
can it happen again? And what will you do to ensure that it doesn't? Uh, thank you. Wow, thank you, Lester. Yeah, uh, good question, uh, Lester. Now, there's a lot happening today currently in today's political element. And um, your book defines quite drastically what happened previously, but um, we're living in a different time, I believe, and uh, there are still issues that need to be addressed politically, uh, communically, culturally, and the uh, question is, and uh, I, 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 you know, the only, was it the only, well, and I'll let you address this too, what they say, the only thing that needs to happen uh, for evil to prosper is that good men and women do nothing. You know, the good men and women do nothing. So the question, of course, is can we go back because the culture wouldn't resist or prevent or make statements or stand up? Uh, what's your stand on that? Well, um, this specific, and again, I, I want to reemphasize that. Um, I chose this particular event because first of all, it's uh, 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 applicable to North Carolina. And right. secondly, the book itself is not just about historical events, you know, but so I wanna get that point out there. But in answering your question, when we look at this particular uh, historical event, the Wilmington Uprising, there were not, very many people, uh, white supremacists, who were uh, uh, opposing the uh, coalition between the Republicans and African American, uh, freed African Americans at that time. There were not many, it was just a handful, but they were able to uh, exert their um, authority over the majority of people. And they were successful in in uh, getting their uh, their uh, 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 white supremacist attitude uh, basically adopted in both uh, uh, the general public's uh, attitude of uh, the way things were at that time, as well as politically. And that is exactly the reason that they were able to do it, because so many people just stood on the sideline. People uh, did not uh, okay. speak out against it. People did not um, uh, uh, make any effort to oppose it. And so that's why I raised the question. Right. Um, today, can it happen again? Because we see the same things happening today with a few people. And we see this as not really, some of us rather see this is not really that important because um, okay, it's just a handful of people, and all the people I know don't support this attitude. Well, it was the same situation then, which is why I named this, uh, this uh, uh, I guess, discussion uh, then and now. Okay. I, appreciate, and I, appreciate, I appreciate your topic matter, Lester. Thanks. We need to have some kind of forum to discuss this. Thanks so much, and thanks so much for your book. Uh, and uh, we, and of course, we are recognizing the historical achievements that our community and people from our community have made. And uh, we appreciate you for writing your book about that. And and uh, stay, stick stick around. Yes. We'll have a, a long I will. discussion on these matters coming up. And Thanks if so you much. want to get the book, uh, we'll make sure you get the link. Uh, but his website is very easy. It's the same as his book, Week Start Unapologetic Present. Is it dot com or dot org? It's dot com. Dot com. And yeah. you can order the book right from his website. Okay. Brightside also now has an affiliate account with Amazon. So you can go to my shopping, brightsideglobaltrade.org slash shop. Click on it and it'll take you to the Amazon page and then just Google it and then search for it. And then you can buy it from that as well. So we have Ellen uh, Langis. What a surprise, Ellen. Thanks, Lester. Thank you for joining. And thank you, Lester. Uh, and thank I'll you. be back for a bigger discussion. But Ellen, can we see you? Wow, what a surprise. Well, hi, I'm, I'm just listening in today. 
Okay, that's all right. But do you want to tell us a little bit about your topic for Women Business Empowerment next month? I apologize. I am eating a sandwich at the moment. You got me off guard. <laughs> no, don't okay. worry. Well, we'll me, see you next month. Let me That's take okay. a minute. Let me take a That's... minute to identify some of the historical accomplishments right. of people from our community. Oh my goodness! I wanted to make sure that I recognize uh, Alia Bundos. Alila Alila Bundos. She was a great great granddaughter of Madam C.J. Walker. And she's written a book called uh, On Her Own Ground. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> amazing story. The great, great granddaughter of Madam C.J. Walker, who of course was the first black millionaire uh, from our community. Uh, what an amazing story she has. And in her book, she talks about uh, her experiences herself and her mother and her grandmother. Uh, and also I wanna recognize the first African-American there. Uh, Reginald F. Lewis, uh, who, um, a man, he, his story of how he prospered from uh, in, in the, into a billionaire status, and that was 1987, he became a billionaire. Uh, my goodness. And, uh, and uh, he, the, the process he developed and, cu and cultivated over time uh, is amazing. Uh, and he did that. His first action is first he became a $22 million millionaire by merging um, uh, companies, uh, McCall Patterns, who um, only sold patterns through, this, uh, through the sewing uh, pattern company. Uh, amazing. We've got some uh, really interesting stories about our members from our community and how we've prospered over time. And uh, and uh, and made a difference in our work and our effort, and uh, you know, and we talked about this earlier on. There will be obstacles. There will be obstacles, but of course, the focus is how do we overcome those obstacles? How do we trans trans transfer those obstacles and to achieve greatness? And uh, we are we're here with you to help you and to help you focus. And, uh, and to understand that our obstacles doesn't mean that we can't achieve. The obstacles that you face doesn't mean that you can't achieve. You know, and if you look back through obstacles, everybody on the platform have probably had obstacles throughout their lives. But the course and the focus is how do we achieve in spite of obstacles? And sometimes God puts obstacles in our face so that we can overcome them and forbear them. And that's the, that's the story that you need to have told. You know, uh, whatever story you're facing now, <laughs> you know, we're all about our stories. Our stories make us who we are. Our stories make us who we can be. And our stories tell the story about what we do with what we're facing. So this means that you have to look at the story of what you're facing and find a way around them and find solutions for you to overcome them and find methods that you can achieve. And so we want to be all about that for you. And we want this to be that year for you. Okay, and so with that being said, I see you're back. And so now your sandwich is finished. And, and we're right here. <laughs> oh, Hi, it's so nice to join you all. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> well, um, I want a chance to speak. So thank uh -huh. you for joining. <laughs> Sure, okay. I'll just say very quickly, I'm Ellen Langus. Hello, all. It's just been delightful listening. I've been uh, enjoying tuning in every so often. Um, next month, I've uh, graciously been invited to just speak briefly um, in honor of Women's History Month and also um, for March 8th, um, the uh, Women's Equality Day. Um, my background is, and it's interesting what you were just saying um, about stories. My, my company, Nusoma Communications, uh, our tagline is, it's time to tell your story. And um, speaking of which, I'm the author of the Girls Know How book series to encourage girls to explore and pursue the careers of their dreams without obstacles that may have been imposed by others. And so I'll just be speaking briefly on that concept. Well, welcome back. And we haven't seen you in ages. So it's <laughs> doing Thank you. So uh, uh, that's a good segue for me to wrap this up. Fancy, I don't know if you want to say something, but Fancy has given us uh, copies of her magazine, Swag Bag, 
and it's fantastic. Uh, it's got some healthy information. So we'll be raffling those. Uh, uh, Brenda is still with us and she's giving a donation of a uh, chopper from Tupperware and a hair oil. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of prizes. So the raffle will begin officially today. Everybody who entered uh, will be uh, uh, entered to win. I think uh, Lester might give us the audio copy as well. Uh, and we'll raffle, we'll be picking uh, everybody who attends, everybody who participates in Facebook. We're gonna do a lot of lives and uh, Instagram and everything. Uh, so everybody who participates between now and the 30th of March uh, will get to win one of our fabulous prizes. And we do give very good prizes. So I'm starting to collect prizes and we'll, we'll pick the lot on, on the 30th. So March 30th will be our Women uh, Business Empowerment. Uh, uh, our objective is to empower jobs and business. And we do that by bringing people together to share their stories and to encourage one another. It also gives you an opportunity to network and meet new people. Uh, and we also want you to refer customers. So if you listen to anyone, you wanna buy a book or buy a service or buy a product, do that. Uh, but if you can't, for whatever reason, uh, encourage someone, go to their website, like their page, write a comment, that's free to do. Uh, you know, encourage someone today and uh, we'll be doing a lot of marketing online. Uh, but our next broadcast will be the 30th of the month. And I'm now going to have only one broadcast per month. Last year, I think we were doing three and four a, a month. But this year, we're going to spend more time doing lives, doing the broadcast, sharing it with a larger audience online. And so... Um, we hope that you will come back on the 30th to encourage women as you have done and uh, tell your story. If you do want to be a speaker, please let me know in advance so I know to have you on because it is going to be a very large broadcast because our women uh, events are usually very long. Uh, so thank you for staying on. And if anyone would like to ask a question, make a comment. Kia never got a chance to speak, so we'll open with her. And we'll go around the room, tell us who you are, want to encourage you to speak, uh, and then we'll end with Elton. So, uh, Kia, over to you. Hello, hello, everyone. And I am pleasantly happy about everything that I've heard today. Mr. Lester, man, let me tell you something. Being a Yankee coming down here in North Carolina, I tell people all the time, it's some stuff that's on these rule books that y'all not paying no kind of attention to. So thanks for pointing that out. I think everyone today has provided some great value. And since I'm not a preacher, I'm not going to be before you long. All I have to say is that in everyone's stories, I've seen pitfalls that have become your purpose um, and have led you into the destiny that you were promised. So I just want to say, keep pushing. Um, my business, I guess you could say, is real estate, but it's so much more than that. In, in, in the business of real estate, I get to help people live out their dreams. So in, in my own way, I'm a dream maker. Um, so I appreciate being able to do so. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I appreciate it. Happy to see you. Happy New Year. Good to see you, Kia. Good to see you, Kia. We haven't seen you at all yeah, this year, yeah, yeah. so welcome. Happy New yes. Year. Uh, awesome. I've been busy, so I, I do uh, uh, apologize. Um, you'll be seeing some of the things that are coming up. Uh, Reg and I have some things going on, um, and I have my first actual home buyer workshop coming up, so I've been prepping for that. So it's just been a lot, a lot of stuff. And, oh, wait, 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 I forgot. Uh, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? The lady that was talking about, uh, the, uh, uh, Shaquana. Don't let her fool you. First of all, that area where her store is, I'm quite sure she's been getting a lot of people that want to purchase that land because that area is going to blow up. That was a great, brilliant yeah. business decision of hers to not only acquire the land, but to also put something on the land for the people that the people can benefit from, not just the ones that are coming, but the ones that are already there. So I just wanted to mention that because you mentioned the Toyota plant, but there's also um, a, another, uh, uh, we have a big 
agency here that does semiconductors, they're in that area as well. And there's two micro sites left. So there will be two other big businesses going into that area. So she is on the cusp of something great over there. And I just wanted to let, let y'all know about that as well. I'm sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. I wanted to tell you this though, too. We sat in a forum uh, and in the forum, we were invited to share information about your business projections and ideas. And, uh, and we were invited to show our agenda focus on what we're looking at. And, and, you know, I kept a tight lip about, you know, that area and, you know, <laughs> semiconductors yeah. and, you know, because this is important. Yeah, she it, you're in yeah, a good yeah, area. Yeah, 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 it's a great <laughs> area. And it's great to know when things about to blow up. Yeah. And that means you're the first to get paid. You're yeah. the first to get paid. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate that yeah. all the way. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Thank right. y'all. That tells me to hold on a little bit longer. <laughs> We're ending. We're ending. We're ending. So I want to thank all of you for staying on with us all day. And uh, we will end early today. So that's a good thing. Uh, and I want to thank all our speakers because it's you're giving us your time. And we, we value that very, very much. You could have been somewhere else. And I was delighted. I think we had a great turnout. And I know these videos will be loved by many of our online channels. Uh, so we're, we're very, very encouraged with that. And hey, guys, we are definitely being noticed because uh, some big things are happening with Brightside. Uh, we are, I don't know if we can officially say this, but we are going to be opening offices in Chapel Hill. And as many of you know, it's a premier, premier uh, place. And I'll tell you a little story about Chapel Hill and me. I worked for Glaxo and uh, for many, many years, and they were going to transfer me to the Triangle. And I uh, got a job in New York to work with an ad agency. And it was a hard decision to make, but I, I decided to go to New York and I was young and you know, uh, wanting to see the big city. Uh, so I spent a long, almost two decades in corporate uh, serving very high level clients. And now 38 years later, I'm going to Chapel Hill. So I want to say that this is a great momentous and I hope to come back with one of those big pharma uh, biotech uh, sponsors. Uh, so we'll have some more resources and we can grow what we've started into something very big. So very big things are happening to us and uh, we are moving. We're going to have a new address. So we'll be letting you know that very shortly. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Um, yeah, right, right, right. So uh, thank you for watching Brightside, uh, and we hope I'm you come back for coming back? Women Business Empowerment March the thirtieth. Go okay, ahead, Shaquana. I want. I'm going to get that uh, that uh, sharpener. That I need that for the knives. <laughs> <laughs> I need that for things. I mean, uh, I mean, Shaquana, can you show your video? Walnuts. Yeah. I need. I have some walnuts that I need to get cut up. For, That's uh, Brenda. <laughs> Yeah, Brenda, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let me let, let me say we this. We need a chopper, Brenda. We've got lots of walnuts yeah, 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 and pecans. Yeah. Let me say this to you Go all. Go ahead. I'm encouraged by you all, and I know that you're all champions in your own right. You're all champions. And I know that you'll seize the opportunity. Seize the opportunity. And sometimes if there's no opportunity, guess what? We're not frightened about yeah. making opportunity. You know, we can make opportunity if we have to. You know, I mean, and your story is your story. Mm -hmm. You know, and don't be afraid to tell your story only when you, you want to be confidential. But, yeah. you know, your story is your story. Your story is important. And your story is, is a mandate for what you can do and achieve. Now, it takes courage to, to be who you are. It takes courage to be who you are. And God has given your story to you because he knows that you are courageous. He knows that you're courageous and he knows that you can do what you need to do. He knows that you're capable. He knows that you have what it takes. And so your story takes courage. It takes courage and it does take tenacity. Tenacity meaning to hold on to what's important when it's not popular to hold on. Mm -hmm. Tenacity meaning I'm going to stand where I'm standing because I need to stand here. 
and nobody else can stand here like I can stand here. Nobody else can hold the road. When you're right, you're right. And don't, don't be afraid. Don't be turned. Don't be pushed aside. It's your story. And so you need to stand, hold, and tell your story. And it's going to take some faith. It's going to take some faith. When you're in the right lane, don't, push, don't have people push you out of your lane. You're in the right lane. I can't move out of my lane. I'm in the right lane. You go around if you need to go around so fast. I'm in the right lane. And see, and your story requires unity. Tell your story to the people that count. Tell your story to the people that matter. Tell your story to the people who can give you the support you need. So, you know, remember that. Courage, tenacity, faith, and unity. Faith and unity. So look at the clouds. Look at your forwardness. Look at your, 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 your where you're headed. You know, I mean, where would we be if it weren't for the people who, yeah. who came to the places that we are have come to? I mean, you know, the, the, the people that have told their story, made us stand up, and made us uh, be courageous and, and also practice faith and, and, and deliver the great truth, deliver the great truth. And so I encourage you all, there's a great truth about to come about. There's a great truth about to come about. But you be who you need to be and you stand where you need to stand and you hold the road where you need to hold the road. Don't let people offer you, you know, a thousand dollars for a piece of land that's worth 300,000. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. Don't do it. All Don't right. do it. Hold your own. Let me, and I'm going to issue with a small prayer. But wait, uh, hey, wait. Yeah. Does anyone want to say anything before we wrap up? Going once, going twice. Anything that you, you need something, you need something said. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. All right. All right. So, you know, uh, uh, and I, I, I think back on Madam C.J. Walker's story. That's a story that I think I'll always we'll uh, share the share video that. with let, you let, next. Let, let me March. say this. Yeah. Let me say this. Now, this woman who was born in the nineteen early nineteen hundreds, you know, and had slave um, a heritage, you know. Now she was amazing. The first African American millionaire. The first African American millionaire. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. You know, and she, you know, had vision. She had great vision. Vision to the tune that she developed a sales staff. And she had a, uh, you know, she had a, a chemical or she had a, 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 a manufacturing center where she would mix her own, uh, her own um, uh, hairdressing, her own hair supply. And she sold it with the sales staff. She she didn't let people tell her what she could do. She put her own uh, 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 procedures, her own mixtures together, her own mixtures together. And then she collected a sales staff that will sell her product. So, I mean, I said, now who does that during her era? She had about 150 salesmen. 150 sales, and she sold it. She sold it. So that takes, that takes vision, and that takes courage, and that that also says I don't need people to tell me what I'm do. I'm to do. I know what I'm going to do, and I know how to do it. So mm -hmm. I am here to do it, and you're here to do it. And so you look at all the people that have come. As far as we've come, you know, the the I mean, the first African American billionaire, billionaire, African American billionaire. Uh, you you mentioned the story, Reginald. I'm in, I'm encouraged by it. Uh, yeah, Reginald, uh, Reginald Lewis, Reginald F. Lewis, billionaire, billionaire. Billionaire, Reginald F. Lewis, first American billionaire. And then we've got quite a few billionaires now. We've got quite a few billionaires. And, then, and we're headed on the right road. So I encourage you all, thank you for being on our broadcast today. And I pray that something has been said, something has been done, or something has been shared with you 
that will bring you to a point of belief, a point of belief. You know, maybe some of all things but if something has brought you to the point where, listen, I need to be there. I need to be there. And you know that you have what it takes to do it. So, I mean, I, I believe it in you and you have what it takes. You know, you need to know you have what it takes. So, so thank you for being on our broadcast today. Continue to stay with us. We're going to stay with you and we're going to tell, give you what you need to, to get where you need to go and, and, and like that. And so it's time, it's time, it's more than time. <laughs> it's time, just say that, I'll leave with you. Time is time, it's more than time. All right, you believe that? So I, I told you today would be powerful. I told you it would be powerful. It's powerful and it's your time. It's your time, it's your time. Don't let people push you back. Don't let them tell you no. It's, your, it's time, it's time is more than time. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. Today's your day. Today's your time. And if you have any questions, if we can help you, uh, give us a call. We'll be there to try. And, uh, and we're here to do what we can to help you. Also reach out to uh, 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 our friend and colleague. And we have quite a few. We'll give you some resources that can help you get what you want. Thank you so much. God bless you. And a prayer. Thank you, dear love, for your grace and mercy, your guiding light. Be, be with us in everything we do. We ask, dear Lord, for your two powerful twins, grace and mercy. Be with us with your grace and mercy so that we can overcome the challenges. Each, each and every person under the sound of my voice, we praise you for your victories yesterday. We praise you for your victories today. And we praise you for your victories tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bye. God and bless have a you. Happy, happy uh, Black History Month. Happy President's Day to yeah. all the founders and presidents. Right, right, and right. Uh, if you're watching Bright Side Global Trade, please subscribe, like the videos, uh, write us comments, share the videos, and uh, let's get great impressions. We need to talk here. We need Thank to have about so half much. an hour Bye. talk. See when you. is a good time? Let's set up a time. Yes, Okay. we will. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Okay.